Leaders in the Law is a series of videos from Meritas Women's Leadership Congress, featuring Meritas lawyers in all stages of their careers. The interviews cover topics such as leadership, mentorship, and the challenges and opportunities of being a woman in the legal industry. The goal of the series is to provide real-life examples of what leadership looks like and to inspire young lawyers on their own journeys to become leaders. Welcome, Kathy Butler. Thank you very much for joining us today. This is our first um, series of Leaders in the Law, um, which is a focus on women leaders in the Meritas Worldwide Network. So thank you for joining us. Um, Kathy, you, you have a wealth of um, experience in the law, focusing primarily on the health sector. Um, but throughout your career, you've had plenty of opportunities um, and experiences in leadership roles throughout your firm and professional organisations. Could you tell us a little bit about you, about some of the leadership roles that you've held during your career and the accomplishments that you're most proud of and why? And when considering that, Cathy, you might also look at those early influences, people who had an impact on your early career and helped shape you as a, as a leader. Okay. Sure. I um, started practicing law after law school in 1987 and have been in the healthcare sector my whole career. Um, as a new lawyer, you know, in a law firm, you're asked to think about marketing and connecting and really building your own brand. Um, so in the early 90s, I got involved in an organization called Women in Health Administration. And really, it was something I was interested in just to meet people in the industry. And there really wasn't another organization that was um, women focused just because of our unique needs. So um, I volunteered there and, you know, started working up through the ranks and ended up being the president of that organization. And ultimately, um, we ended up letting, uh, well, letting, but merging with uh, another group that had men as well. And now it's a uh, uh, certified by the American College of Healthcare Executives, and it's statewide. Well, it's really a national group, and there's a statewide chapter. So, I, I'm proud of what happened with that group. Um, some of the women that I met back at that time are now leaders in big in health insurance companies, hospital systems. So, it was enjoyable, and it was also a way to meet people in my field. Um, I started, uh, I've also been the health law practice group manager here at the firm since the early 2000s. Um, I've been involved in Bar Association Health and Hospital Law Committee. Um, and then in 2004 became the Meritas member contact and really started my Meritas career um, being on the board initially from 2011 to 2013 and was asked by Andre Ryan to be on the executive committee. And that was from 2012 to 2014. And after you've been on the board um, and been, in, at least for me, involved in Meritas, um, uh, the people are so great and the contacts are good. And um, it was a very interesting group. And so I wanted to keep involved. And I joined the US Leadership Committee in 2016 and succeeded uh, Bill Metzger, who was the initial chair of that committee from 2018 to 2020. And so, um, again, just my interest in Meritas and, and I see the good that it does for our firm and it's fulfilling for me personally. Um, I went back on the board and I was asked to come and luckily was um, nominated to come back on the board in 2022. So I'm now on my second board term um, and enjoying that. So all of those different leadership roles are have provided satisfaction in a different way. You know, you're always trying to achieve a goal and success for the people that you're leading. Um, so that's kind of why I do it. Um, as far as uh, being a leader and what attributes of a leader are, I think you have to be positive um, and open-minded to a certain degree, um, be able to communicate and motivate people. Um, you know, I think being credible and fair 
and being able, willing to do the work. You know, I, I think all of my leadership positions have come from being willing to pitch in and help when you were needed and knowing people believe they can rely on you if you say you're going to do something, do it. So. And Kathy, I would say too, I mean, I've been part of the Meritas group um, only since about 2009, I think our firm joined. And you've been a prominent leader um, in that group all my experience in Meritas. That's why I'm so pleased that you're the first person that um, that I'm talking to. Um, and I would say, Kathy, for me, um, you are humble and you are modest, yet you are strong. And I think those attributes are for, for someone who's not, um, you know, I'm, I'm younger than you, but not by a long shot. Um, it's, you know, um, looking at a, a, a leader like you, looking at a woman who's successful without the ego and without feeling um, animosity towards, you know, men or um, or the structure of society or some of the challenges that we've had in women is really inspirational. So um, from my point of view, I just want to put that on the table that we, we've spoken, we both work in the healthcare sector, which is just a coincidence. Yeah. Um, and I don't think our connection is really due to that. It's more due to um, being at the conferences, but you you are an inspirational leader. And I think your humility and, and, um, and your modest nature is, for me, something that I've really connected with. Well, thank you. I um, I think my, I, I think I've picked things that I really enjoy doing, and I think that's kind of the key. You know, some people don't enjoy doing certain things, but they feel like they have to to market themselves or whatever. <clears throat> I think if you don't enjoy what you're doing, it shows, and it's not authentic. And I do think it's important to be authentic. Um, and for me, I've gotten more out of my leadership roles than I, I think sometimes I've given, you know, it's just, especially with Meritas, I mean, the people I've met all over the world, you included, and just getting to know the people. And I think that those relationships, it's really kind of what Meritas is about, um, are really rewarding for me personally. So that's kind of my motivation. Um, I, one of those type A people that if I'm going to take something on, I've got to do it the best I can. And so, um, you know, you don't always feel like, and I'm sure everybody feels this way at some point, like you're a fail, you know, you're not doing anything right. Um, I think especially women can fall into that when you're trying to balance home and uh, kids, family, uh, work, um, all the other pressures that you have. Um, but I've, I've been really lucky to have a very supportive group around me that, you know, I felt like I could ask for help. And I think that's one of the things being, being a leader and putting yourself out there and doing the best you can. But if it gets to a point where you feel overwhelmed that you just step back and ask for help. Um, there was a period in my career that I had to do that. And, um, you know, if, if you have people that you trust and can, you know, your colleagues will support you. Um, I had to do that for a little bit and, and take something off the plate because it just yeah. got to be too much and you can't be afraid to do that. Um, people, yeah, and I think, people, go ahead. Sorry, Kathy, you, go, you keep going. I, th I think sometimes women believe people will think they're weak because we have to prove something and that if we admit that we can't do everything, that that's somehow going to be a black mark. Um, I, I don't, I don't believe that. I think if you're working hard and doing your best, I think people recognize that. And, um, I I've done things in my career along the way that I just had to do like for my family. When I was early on, early on, well, first of all, I was the first associate in our firm to get pregnant. <laughs> and so I had to battle through, you know, certain people believing six weeks was entirely appropriate for a maternity leave, not understanding all the things that went around it. So we've come a long way since then. But even after I had my kids, I, I went to their school events and I was a root mom and you figure out a way to work it in. And, and I'm glad I did it. Cause I think, you know, women feel guilty all the time about 
taking that time to do it. And the other thing I did, and I tell the young lawyers I work with, I take, when my kids were little, I took two weeks, I still do, two weeks of on an un, uninterrupted vacation because I give 110% of myself to the job. And so for two weeks out of a year, I can carve it out and get away. And I think it's good for me. It was good for my family. So I, I think you can't be afraid to set those boundaries and, and protect what you need to do for your personal life as well as your work life. And Kathy, you would have been a trailblazer in that regard. I mean, um it's you know it has has been a challenge for for many women um and uh, you know what you say is absolutely right revealing your vulnerability putting your hand up and saying you know when I do something I want to do it best I can but I can't do everything so um you know calling that out is actually a strength but it takes a lot of courage to do that particularly when you're the first sort of in the firm um uh, but again, there are plenty of women, I think, who followed you, who probably looked at at the decisions and the choices yeah. that you've made um, and admired that and then being ha had the courage then to model themselves on um, on the choices um, and, and the values that you've adopted throughout your life and being able to achieve that, you know, outstanding professional career, but also being a mother and, and having a family and, you know, having a life. Uh -huh. And as you get older, it's the kids grow up and go away and then you have parents and, you know, so a woman's work is never done, as they say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the best piece of advice I ever got and actually came from the one of the uh, name partners in our firm uh, was just make yourself useful. It is as simple as that. And if you make your if you work hard and you're a valuable person and you you know, carve out your niche. Um, I think people recognize that. Um, I also had the benefit of a really good mentor when I was um, just starting out. She was an attorney here and is now the dean of a big law school on the East Coast. We're still friends. Um, she helped me in a managed law firm politics. I was so green. I knew nothing about you know, being in a law firm and how it all worked. And, and she was also kind of a trailblazer dealing with women's issues at that time. Uh, she taught me how to, how to write. She was a very good teacher. Um, and always, I always felt supported and was somebody that gave me good, like off, off record advice about how to deal with certain people. And so having somebody like that was, was great for me. Um, Kathy, did that relationship, was that formal or did that just evolve um, naturally? Well, she, worked in, I, she was supervised me and gave me work. Um, she was in my department, but it was a personal relationship, after, you know, mainly based on, I, I'll never forget the first one of the projects I gave her. She said, I always love the way you give me projects because all the research would be attached back then. We didn't have anything electronic. Y'all had to pull it out of <clears throat> we were reading the Federal Register um, every day for for laws, but um, and I remembered that, <clears throat> and I just did that. I tried to figure out what the people I were was working for wanted and needed, and what was convenient. So I think she appreciated that. She gave me more work, and it was a work relationship that ultimately grew into very good personal relationship, and we we are still good friends. So. She's not here, obviously, anymore, but even across the miles, we, we connect. That's great. And Kathy, challenges, obviously, you've touched on some of the challenges um, that you face. I suppose um, whether or not you, th you feel those challenges are because you're a female or you just feel that the challenges are part of the challenges of being a, uh, being a lawyer and, um, and um, managing, you know, the response, professional responsibilities and the family responsibilities, which we acknowledge men do as well these days. Um, but are there any challenges that sort of stick out in your journey that you could share with us? And I suppose your thought process or the support network of how you how you overcome those, other than what you've said about calling out, you know, calling out when there's too much on. You know, <clears throat> I've, I've recognized it over the years. I mean, you know, sometimes I think. 
uh, well, I don't get too caught up in the, it's a, a male, female thing occasionally. Uh, and I don't think you can like be, I personally don't view everything as being gender or identity based. Um, you know, I just, I'm not sure, I, I recognize it for what it is. I just try to find a way to overcome it. And, and sometimes it's just based on ignorance. And so I just ignore it. I mean, it's not worth wasting energy on. Um, but there are times when, you know, you see things happening that you can have. And I, I remember at one point there was um, a lawyer that I knew that always told off-color jokes that were really, I thought, offensive. And I, I think some of the, the men thought they were offensive too. And I finally just had to say something to him nicely that, you know, it's just not really appreciated. Um, and so sometimes you just have to confront it. And after that, he stopped. And Or when I would come up, he'd said, oh, we can't say anything around Kathy. And people, finally, I think he just, <laughs> you know, I don't know. But I don't, I don't think, I, I would choose to find a more, I try to find a positive way to address it, like working on policies that are fair and that people understand why having a 12 week maternity policy makes sense. And I think it makes sense for men to have paternity policies as well. So yeah. it doesn't have to always be that way. But I do think, I think there still are biases to overcome and you know it's a it's I think it's always going to be there because humans are humans so I just got mm -hmm. I just work to try to overcome their perceptions whether they're right or wrong yeah I mean we certainly have um come a very long way and there are um still you know biases not only gender but there are biases across the profession and across um across the law generally but we have you know we have come a long way and I think um, a lot of what you've said today and shared with us today is, you know, evident of um, the evolution of the female professional um, lawyer. Um, so it's been an absolute pleasure, Kathy. I really appreciate you sharing uh, your journey with us. And as I said, I'm so pleased that you're the first person that, um, that I've spoken to in this series of um, spotlighting um, women leaders in the law. So thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for getting up very, very early in Australia to do this.